Once, one of the wealthiest countries in South America, Venezuela has been grappling with severe economic and financial challenges for years. Hyperinflation, widespread shortages of basic goods and the collapsing currency have taken its toll on the country's economy and its people. At the heart of these challenges lies a complex mix of factors, including political instability, imposed sanctions and a heavy reliance on oil exports. As oil prices plummeted, Venezuela's economy crumbled, leading to skyrocketing inflation and a rapidly devaluating currency. Many have fled the country in search of better opportunities, leading to a refugee crisis in neighbouring countries. Compared to a few years ago, things seem to be turning the corner, with food on the supermarket shelves again and only occasional queues at the petrol stations. The reality is, the country's problems are far from over. There's also a massive wealth gap and class divide in Venezuela. This divide is a pressing issue that continues to shape the country's complex and political economic landscapes. The majority of wealthy Venezuelans live in gated communities with security guards at the end of the street, behind enclosed properties, high walls and electric fences. I've been granted a rare opportunity to step inside one of Venezuela's most exclusive country clubs. The club boasts an 18-hole golf course, football pitch, tennis courts, swimming pool, gym, horse stables and show jumping area, restaurants, bars and the list goes on, as well as its own magazine. There's a joining fee of around $100,000, which I've heard they've had to reduce significantly, and then a monthly fee on top of that. I jumped on a moto taxi to go and visit one of the biggest slums in the world. Welcome to Patare, South America's most densely populated and dangerous hood. Population, according to 2020 estimates, Patare has a population of approximately 448,861 inhabitants, making this an absolutely ginormous neighbourhood. Plaza Sucre is the old town area in the neighbourhood. With beautiful cobbled streets and colonial architecture, it's a far cry from the rest of Patare. It really was a busy and bustling place. There's over 80,000 per kilometre square living here. The neighbourhood was originally established in the 1940s as a response to the rapid urbanisation of Caracas. But time to move on and jump on that motorbike again. It's time to relax and unwind as I'm heading towards one of Caracas's most famous mountains and national parks. Guaraira Repano, or simply El Avila National Park, is a protected natural area located in Caracas, known as the lungs of the city. Can you hear that? It's like a, uh, it's like some sort of chicken. <laughs> it's up there somewhere. It's not a parrot. It has multiple routes to hike to take you to the top, ranging from a few hours to a few days. I took a popular route that was only about 1.5 hours with a waterfall en route. It had multiple rest areas and a tap to drink out of at the top. There was also an outdoor gym at the top. The route I took finished at about 1,400 metres. There's a cable car that takes you up to 2,130 metres with a hotel on top and its highest point is 2,765 metres. The park is named after a legendary indigenous chief who led a rebellion against a Spanish conquistador in the 16th century. In 2023, devastating fire broke out in El Avila, causing significant damage to the ecosystem and highlighting the importance of protecting this fragile and natural resource. The park is also a source of fresh water for the city, with several rivers and waterfalls originating within its boundaries. 
Conservation efforts are ongoing to protect Ilavala's biodiversity and address the challenges such as deforestation, illegal logging and urban encroachment. I'm in the mountains, about 1,700 meters above sea level, in a German town in Venezuela. This is Colonia Tovar. The town was founded in 1843 by German immigrants who named it after Martin Tova y Ponti, a Venezuelan independence hero. The town is famous for its Bavarian style architecture with German style pointed roofs and charming streets. It has an elevation of approximately 5,900 feet above sea level and its economy is mainly based on tourism, agriculture and small-scale manufacturing. The town has a relatively cool climate with average temperatures ranging from 15 to 22 C. St Martin's Church is a stunning Catholic church in the heart of the town, built in 1863 as a place of worship that reminds them of their homeland. Many residents of Colonia Tovar still speak a German dialect called Colonia Tovar dialect or Aleman Coloniero, which is a blend of Bavarian and Venezuelan Spanish. The town is known for its traditional crafts such as woodworking, pottery and embroidery which are often sold in local markets and shops. It has a population of around 21,000 people. Colonia Tovar offers a captivating experience that transcends borders and continents, making it a must-visit destination for people seeking a truly immersive and unforgettable journey. Perched on top one of the many hilltops was a brewery. A perfect way to finish my day here. The brewery offers free tours and samples. There was a wide range of beer available including APA, fruit beer, pale ales, pilsners and many more. The beer garden had one of the best views of Colonia Tavar. I hope you've enjoyed my week of touristing around Caracas and Venezuela. Next time I'm going back to the Gran Sabana to start my journey where I left off. If you've enjoyed this video Please like, subscribe, and if you'd like to buy us a coffee to help fuel this journey, the link is in the description. Thank you.